currently in Cape May County, and I it's pretty amazing being here. Hi, Pablo. How are you? Um, because the I'm gonna find the best angle for me and the monarch to share the frame. Maybe like that. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing to be here. Uh, oh, let me say hi, everyone. This is Issa, your host of the Bug Scope. Welcome to the broadcast. If you enjoy it, make sure you share it with a friend and press the like button and say hello in the chat. So, hello. Hello, Robert. How are you? So, yeah, here I am with a monarch in southern New Jersey. And this garden that I'm in is just full of monarch monarchs. They're fueling up for their big trip down to Mexico because tis the season. It's fall. And what do monarchs do? They escape the winter by flying south. Um, Hello, Heavenly. Hi, Pablo. Hi, everyone. Um, so we're going to try to sneak up on a bunch of monarchs that are fueling up for the trip down south during this broadcast. Hi, Frank. How's it going? I'm going to flip the camera and see if we can see this monarch from the... Oh, oh it's still there. This one's very calm um, from the other side, too. Hello, monarch. And you can see this beautiful black body with the bands of black that highlight the orange wings and the white speckles, those unmistakable characteristics of the beautiful monarch butterfly, Danaus plexippus. Um, thanks for the awards. Hi, David. Hi, Pablo. Happy fall, you guys. Yeah, there, this is a sign of fall right here when the monarchs are headed south. And um, I'm going to say hi again one second. Um, and hi, everyone. Let me get another area that's full of monarchs. This is part of this that I'm like, ah, like, I don't wanna really want to share this, but they're loving this butterfly bush over here. The reason why I hesitate about the butterfly bush is that butterfly bush is not a great, it's not the most highly recommended thing to have in your garden because it's not native in this area of North America. It's native to Asia. However, um, and, and the thing is that it doesn't create, it's not a source of food to nurture um, young moths and butterflies or other insects in the area, but it is a great source of nectar. And so the problem is that because it offers so much nectar to moths and butterflies, the moths and butterflies might be more likely to visit butterfly bushes instead of native plants. So, and that causes the native plant pollen to not be carried around as readily as it would otherwise if it didn't have to compete with the nectar source of butterfly bush. So that's the disclaimer, all right? That's the disclaimer about me showing butterfly bush. I'm like, well, I was like, do I show it or not? But like, I have to because so many monarchs are on this butterfly bush fueling up. So I'm going to flip. So I think maybe butterfly bush is acceptable in a place like this, where like traditionally this location where I am is dune, essentially. There's one flying overhead. And so a lot of things aren't really, a lot of things that are going to grow around here aren't like the most native unless it's like beach berry and other and goldenrod seaside goldenrod things like that anyway i'll flip the camera let's get some monarchs in the frame okay there's a couple down here so when i woke up this morning i definitely want to come back out in the morning because um i just looked into this garden it's a really a very small plot of land and there were so many monarchs. I was like, what? Like, you think that there'd be a dome on top of this place, keeping them all in to get this high of a concentration. There were like 25 monarchs all flying around. And th these are large butterflies too. Um, and there are other butterflies too that I'm not even mentioning. I've seen morning cloaks here, lots of skippers, some, um, this one's flying around, finding a new spot. Um, morning cloaks and Buckeye butterflies are another one that I often see at this time of year, another sign of fall to me. What's on this, what, what is on the proboscis of this butterfly? I don't know why it, is, it was uh, white like that. That was kind of strange. Does this one have a white proboscis? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Kind of strange. If anybody knows, I'm going to ask the Twitterverse entomology community about that. Is this a random garden you pass by? This is not a random garden. Um, this is my grandmother's garden, and it 
is just such a great resource for the monarchs as they fly south. I'm going to put my macro lens on to see how close we can get to this monarch. I think it's the selfie stick definitely helps me with getting a closer look without disturbing. Um, up, off it flies to another spot. Um, actually, before I do that, I do want to show you guys. Uh, sorry for jumping around so much. I want to show you guys also the um, milkweed. So this is a host plant for the monarchs, and you can see it has lots of bites in it. The only th the thing that's strange though, here I'll flip the camera to talk to you. The thing that's strange though about um, these these plants this year is like yeah, there's a lot of adult monarch butterflies flying around, which is awesome. I'm really happy to see that. But I don't think that the caterpillars in the garden here were as successful. So, like, like I haven't seen this summer uh, adult, like, healthy, robust, large monarch caterpillars. There's a lot of signs on these leaves of baby caterpillars. Like, little baby monarchs will make sort of, like, these, here, these sort of, like, C-shaped tiny holes in the leaf, which helps protect them from getting the latex um, that exudes from milkweed. Here, let me tear the milkweed to show you what I mean. So if I tear the leaf, see that white that's coming on the sides? If the monarchs don't take a careful bite to help like leak it a different direction, then it'll flood into its mouth and overwhelm the caterpillars. That's, a, that's part of the defense of the milkweed. So there's a ton of these holes indicating that there have been a lot of eggs laid on these milkweeds in the garden. But I don't see, like, like oh, sorry, there's biting flies out here. Um, but the thing that I'm not noticing are one the adult healthy caterpillars i have not noticed them when i've checked in like august and earlier september and then i also have not noticed um there's not like missing leaves like oftentimes the large adult caterpillars will just like munch down the whole entire plant um or at least a lot of the big leaves and all, like pretty much all of these milkweeds have all their leaves intact they just have a bunch of holes in the leaves which indicate the baby caterpillars so that means that there must be a lot of predation on the caterpillars in this garden. Um, I guess maybe more than other years. And sometimes that's just how nature is. There's an ebb and flow of um, predators and the balance will, will you know, go up and down and change and not be consistent because that's just how things are, like, like waves, lots of wave-like motions um, or patterns, I mean, in nature. Um, and... Yeah, so, so what eats caterpillars? Um, ant, uh, lacewing, green lacewing larvae will eat them, known as aphid lions. They also eat caterpillars. Ants might carry them off. Wasps might carry them off as a meal. All sorts of things. Flies might parasitize them. There are also viruses that are possible that come into play. So there's it's it's hard to know exactly and it could just be like all those different things that for some reason are playing into the that um high predation rate for the caterpillars so curious to see how next year will be but hopefully i will be in borneo <laughs> and i can get the report from others who come by and keep tabs okay back to the adults though that's the little um aside on the uh other life stage of the monarchs in this garden. So I'm flipping the camera. Hey Chris, how's it going? Um, purple. Hi David, thanks for hopping on Twitch. Um, what Purple mud crab asks, what do bugs need an ambassador for? Well, they can't speak, bugs don't, bugs can't speak English, so it can be really helpful for people who dive into the insect world to be able to help um, translate for insects on what exactly is going on with them and kind of, you know, ow! something really really bit me Unless, a green head or something i don't know what it is that bit me this is going to be the, the next camera we'll do a live live cam on my legs to, to watch what fly comes by and bites me all right they're definitely flies but not clearly green heads okay <laughs> ah, painful broadcast this year between the mosquitoes and whatever this fly is that's biting me okay back to the adults a bee told me he was really busy did it go bzz, bzz, bzz. Okay, so monarchs. Here's another monarch. They are camera shy, so um, that's why, once again, it's very helpful to have the selfie stick. They're not just good for selfies, they're also great 
explore reaching out and not scaring an insect away when you're trying to get a closer look at it. I love seeing those backlit wings when the light goes through the wings. Um, I love seeing it on plants. I also, of course, love seeing it on bugs. I think it's so cool. Looks all glowy and beautiful. And here we have a skipper. Oh, it already skipped away. So, so much for that skipper. <laughs> okay. So yeah, they're really enjoying the butterfly bush here, which I said once again is like great for nectar, but it's not a native plant. Um, so it has received a lot of criticism. Um, in, the, um, in the butterfly watching and conservation community as a heads up. Um, and then, <clears throat> oh, thanks, David. I'm doing well, thanks. I'm really enjoying the monarchs. Here's some more that are flying around. We'll see if we can reach up to the sky and say hello. This monarch as it fuels up for the long journey to Mexico. Goodbye, monarch. I really want to get a picture of them flying. I wonder how many tries, it would, how many clicks of the camera it would take for me to capture it mid-flight like that. Especially um, backlit it would be super awesome. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, let me just scroll back up in the comments because I know I missed a couple of them. No, the, this smokeweed one is, is of the Swiss cheese variety. Yep, all those holes made possible by the monarch caterpillar. Um, so yeah, let me just go up a little more. Oh, mosquito now. Yeah, the flies, the flies are out to get me. So they must have also been out to get those caterpillars. That's not at all scientific of a statement. That's not, not at all a scientific statement, but I, the human side of me once thinks that is angry at the flies. But then I just ate some chocolate, so I'm grateful for flies, and I shouldn't be putting them all in a box. <sighs> life, life. Um, anyway, yeah, heavenly, they are really enjoying it. And hi, Kobe. Um, David, do I have you as a moderator on Twitch? It's funny, the, some of the comments are not coming through from the other person, it seems like. So maybe that's some sort of Twitch filter or Pat's filter, I'm not sure. Okay, um, let's go look at some of the monarchs that are over here too. Oops, I just walked into a spider web. Um, yeah, the butterfly bush right now is where it's at, apparently. It, in the morning, it was more evenly distributed, maybe because there was a big morning breakfast rush. And so they were all just coming out to go wherever they could go to get the nourishment they sought to get the day going. But this, one's, this one here, interestingly, is not even moving. It's really just hanging out. So hello. Beautiful wings you have. Um, so do you guys know how to tell the difference between a monarch male and female? This one, anybody know if this is a male or a female here? Yes, how are flies related to chocolate? Flies pollinate chocolate. And so we can thank the really tiny midge for the gift, the beauty, the wonderful, delicious taste of chocolate. Um, it's super underappreciated, I'd say. Okay. So we can tell if a monarch butterfly is a male or a female based on if it has the, this dark little black scale patch on the back, oh, on its hind wings. And we were able to see it a moment ago when this monarch butterfly flapped its wings open, but now its wings are closed again. So maybe we can check on another butterfly that's being a little more active to see if, it'll, if we'll, we're able to see if it's a male or a female. Why would flies do that? Oh, well, flying away. Um, why would flies do that? They would pollinate chocolate because they get some sort of benefit out of it. So pollination is not just something that they do to be nice. They, um, pollinators visit flowers and pollinate because they're getting something out of it. Oh, here. So the one on the left here looks like it must be a male. I think I see this little pat black patch, which has scale, special scales that release pheromones, androgynous scales. 
So they get nectar. Pollinators either get nectar or pollen out of the pollination exchange. And then the plants are offering the nectar and the pollen as rewards to get their genes passed around for reproduction. Um, basically, they're use plants are using the insects as trans. Add my macro lens. It might or might not work. I don't know if I'll be able to get close enough, but we're going to try. Ow, I'm getting bit by flies. Answer. Here we have double whammy how close we can get. Kind of close, but it's hard to get the right angle. Whee! Ow, I'm being bitten so badly. Wow. We need more breezes here to blow the biting flies away. So there it is, dipping its proboscis into the flowers and getting some sweet, delicious nectar. Ow, 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 being bit by flies. It's never fun. Hello, beautiful butterfly. Okay. I think I'm getting a little too close to them with that method. Oh my gosh, the flies. Ah. Um, what's your opinion on mammals? I don't know. There's a lot of mammals out there. So one opinion can be mammals are great insect food. <laughs> but there's many opinions to have on mammals. Um, what type of flies are biting me? I don't even know what type of fly it is, to tell the truth. It looks like a really generic fly. So maybe what I'll have to do is go get my butterfly net and come back out here and catch some of them um, to stick them and then stick them in the freezer and bring them to the collection to figure out what they are. So I am pretty curious. They're not typical greenheads, which you get in a marshy area. Um, they just, like I said, look super generic. So maybe they are some sort, sort of tabanid or horsefly that looks, um, I don't know. Yeah, I can't tell what they are, but they're not mosquitoes. Although there are mosquitoes out here too. Okay. All right, let's look at one more, one more monarch and then we can call it a day. Um, all right, I'm going to go to the other side of them because I really like it when they're backlit. Lots of tiptoeing around the garden so I don't step on any plants. Have you guys seen a monarch this year? Here is a skipper, which is another type of butterfly that um, has kind of curved and hooked antenna rather than knobby antenna or feathery antenna or thread-like antenna. I'm trying to so I'm moving around. Off it goes. Off it skips away. Oops, darn it. I scared the monarchs as I stood up. But here's one monarch. That's pretty. Oh, actually, this might be this one. Nope. Anyway. Yeah, so this is a really wonderful resource for them as they go down to Mexico, and I'm very grateful for this garden, as I'm sure the monarchs are too. And as Bug Ambassador, I say that they're the monarch. The monarchs say thank you for the, all these wonderful nectar resources because they need patches like this as they make that long, several thousand mile journey down south to Mexico. Lots of gliding, lots of refueling. Um, that's a Incredible migration. So, not yet, says David. The number of butterflies seems lower since I like liked chasing them in the 1970s. Yeah, it's. I know that the numbers in California have been on the decline, unfortunately. So, okay. Wee. 
All right, these flies are getting to me too much. So I'm going to wrap this up. But thanks, guys, for joining. I hope you enjoyed the monarchs. And if you see one on your, um, I can't even see the screen because it's so bright. If you happen to come across a monarch as you um, go about your day, then make sure you cheer it on on its way to Mexico if you're on the East Coast. This is how they survive the winter. They fly away and run away from it. So no monarchs over there that you know of. Yeah, there, there are monarchs like all in many different parts of the world. But yeah, I'm not sure that they are over there in Europe. Um, maybe some closely related species, but I'm not totally sure. I'll have to look into it because I'm curious now. Cool. All right. Well, take care, you guys. Have a great week. Cheers.